Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 8, Part 3. In today's lesson we will be learning about current account, balance of payments. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. The balance of payments is a record of all the monetary transactions between residents of a country and the rest of the world over a given period of time. It is divided into three main accounts, the current account, the capital account, and the financial account. In the explanation of this topic, we'll look at the balance of payments from the point of view of the UK. First, the current account. The current account records the following. The visible trade. These are goods, or you could think of them as physical items. Things you can actually touch. The invisible trade. These are services, or things you can't touch. Examples would be banking or financial services. It includes the income received or made in payment for the use of factors of production. Those land, labor and capital things we studied before in this topic. First, income debits or outflows. These include wages paid to overseas residents working in the UK, interest, profits and dividends paid out to overseas residents and firms who have invested in the UK. Next, income credits or inflows. These include wages paid to UK residents working overseas, any interest, profits and dividends earned by UK residents and firms on investments they have in other countries. This gives us the rather simple equation of net income equals income received minus income paid. Now, let's look at current transfers. These include payments between governments for international cooperation and other transactions that involve no direct payment or productive activity. Debits or outflows include such things as financial aid, donations, and pension payments paid to overseas residents and foreign governments and tax and excise duties paid by UK residents on foreign purchases. Credits or inflows include such things as financial aid, donations, grants and pension payments received from overseas residents and foreign governments and tax and excise duties paid by overseas residents on UK purchases. So again, we come up with a simple equation of Net transfers equal transfers received minus transfers paid. When the current account shows a positive number, it is in surplus. This is when inflows exceed outflows. When the current account shows a negative number, it is in deficit. This is when outflows exceed inflows. So, you have a current account deficit. This is when the financial outflows in the current account exceed its financial inflows. For example, export demand and net incomes and transfers falls and or import demand rises. What are the causes? Higher exchange rate. If the currency is overvalued, imports will be cheaper and therefore there will be a higher quantity of imports. Exports will become uncompetitive and therefore there will be a fall in the quantity of exports. Economic growth. If there is an increase in aggregate demand and national income increases, people will have more disposable income to consume goods. If producers cannot meet the domestic demand, consumers will have to import goods from abroad. Thus faster economic growth enables the possibility of a current account deficit developing. Decline in competitiveness. If export industries are in decline and cannot compete with foreign countries, the exports fall, ushering in a deficit. This is a major reason for many countries today experiencing current account deficits. Inflation. This makes exports less competitive and imports more competitive. Recession in other countries. If the country's main trading partners experience negative economic growth then they will buy less of the country's exports, worsening the current account. Borrowing money. If countries are borrowing money from other countries to finance their expenditure and growth, current account deficits will develop. What are the consequences? Low growth. 
a deficit leads to lower aggregate demand and therefore slower growth. Unemployment Deficit can lead to loss of jobs in domestic industries as their demand for exports is low and demand for imports is high. Lower standard of living, in the long run, persistent trade deficits undermine the standard of living as demand and income fall, especially if the net incomes and transfers show a negative balance. Capital outflow Currency weakness can lead to investors losing confidence in the economy and taking capital away. Loss of foreign currency reserves Countries may run short of vital foreign currency reserves as more foreign currency is being spent on imports and foreign currency revenues from exports is falling. Increased borrowing Countries need to borrow money or attract foreign investment in order to rectify their current account deficits. In addition, there is an opportunity cost of debt repayment, as the government cannot use this money to stimulate economic growth. Lower exchange rate A fall in demand for exports and or a rise in the demand for imports reduces the exchange rate. While a lower exchange rate can mean exports become more price competitive, it also means that essential imports, such as oil and foodstuffs, will become more expensive. This can lead to imported inflation. The severity of these consequences depends on the size and duration of the deficit. Persistent deficits can harm the economy in the long run as low export growth causes unemployment. How do we correct a current account deficit? Do nothing because a floating exchange rate should correct it. If there is a trade deficit, a depreciation will occur as more currency is being spent than received. Depreciation will make imports more expensive and exports cheaper. As a result, domestic demand for imports will fall and foreign demand for exports will rise, reducing the deficit. Use contractionary fiscal policy. A government can cut public expenditure and increase taxes to reduce total demand in the economy, which will reduce demand for imports and improve the trade balance. However, a fall in demand may affect firms in the economy who may cut output and employment in response. Use contractionary monetary policy. A higher interest rate will attract more direct inward investments and balance and nullify the trade deficit. Higher interest rates will also make borrowing from banks more expensive and increase the incentive to save, thus discouraging consumers from spending. They can also devalue the exchange rate to improve export competitiveness and demand. Protectionist measures. These measures reduce the competitiveness of imports, thereby making domestic consumption more attractive. For example, Tariffs raise the price of imports while quotas limit the amount of imports in the economy. So, you have a current account surplus, well, things could be worse. When the financial inflows in the current account exceed its financial outflows, i.e., export demand and net incomes and transfers rise, and or import demand falls. What are the causes? Improved competitiveness. Exports have become more price competitive in the international market due to perhaps better labor productivity or low prices. Growth in foreign countries. Export demand may have risen due to trading partners experiencing growth and higher incomes. High foreign direct investment. Strong export growth can be the result of a high level of foreign direct investment. Depreciation. A trade surplus might result from a country's depreciation of its exchange rate. High domestic savings rates. High levels of domestic savings and low domestic consumption of goods and services cause more products to be exported and imports to fall. Closed economy. Some countries have a low share of national income taken up by imports, perhaps because of a range of tariff and non-tariff barriers. What are the consequences? Economic growth. Net exports is a component of GDP, so a rise in exports and incomes will cause economic growth. Appreciation. As exports increase, the demand for the currency increases and therefore the value of the currency increases, which will make imports more expensive and cause its demand to fall. Employment. Since exports have increased, jobs in the export industries will have increased too. Better standards of living. Higher net incomes and transfers and export revenue make the country's citizens better off. Inflation. Higher demand for exports can lead to demand pull inflation. 
This can diminish the international competitiveness of the country over time as the price of exports rises due to inflation. How do we correct a current account surplus? Do nothing because a floating exchange rate should correct it. If there is a trade surplus, an appreciation will occur as more currency is being demanded. An appreciation will make imports cheaper and exports expensive. As a result, foreign demand for exports will fall and domestic demand for imports will rise, reducing a trade surplus. Use expansionary fiscal policy. Increasing public expenditure and cutting taxes can boost total demand in an economy for imported goods and services. Use expansionary monetary policy. Lower interest rates will make borrowing from banks cheaper and increase the incentive to spend, thus encouraging consumers to spend on imports and correct a trade surplus. Remove protectionist measures. Reducing tariffs and quotas cause imports to rise and close a surplus in the current account. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.